Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about John Deere filters. So to my right here, I have an example of a John Deere air filter. We'll be talking about the construction and performance of the John Deere air filter. Then here in the middle, I've got an example of the John Deere cartridge style oil filter or drop-in style oil filter, and we'll have a couple of competitive comparisons here to go along with it. And then also to my left, I've got an example of the John Deere hydraulic filter where we'll also be talking about the construction and performance of it. So if you'll stick with me here, we'll get started. So first let's talk about the John Deere air filters. Now here's a good example of a highly sold John Deere air filter. And the thing that makes John Deere's air filters superior to most other manufacturers is the way they are constructed. Now John Deere uses what's called UltraWeb for their main filtration system, whereas other brands use different types of pleating systems and maybe even cellulose, which are a really good filter. But UltraWeb still proves to be 10 times more effective than cellulose. So if we look down here at this acrylic block, we see examples of dust particles that are captured within the different types of filters. So we have the competitive filter here, then we have the cellulose here in the middle, and then lastly the ultra web. And what this is showing is 99% effectiveness here, 99.9% .9 effectiveness here, and 99.99% effectiveness here. So, and as you can see, this is gonna be the amount of dust particles that is passing through that filter in the specified amount of time from above here. Now talking about cartridge style or drop-in oil filters, we have three different examples here that we're gonna go over. Like we said, we have the John Deere here on the right. Then in the middle, we're gonna have our Wix or Napa since Wix makes the Napa filter. And then also we will have a Baldwin here to the left. Now we're going to be looking at the overall construction of these filters. We're going to be looking at such things as the end caps. We'll be looking at the pleating system here. And then we'll also be looking at the interior of these filters as well. So first let's start with our end caps. As you can see here, there is a significant difference from the John Deere to the Baldwin. And so as you can see, we have a much larger end cap here on the Baldwin than we do on the Deere. And then here on the Wix, not too bad, just a little bit further down than the John Deere. But why this makes a big difference is with, with the smaller end caps means you have more surface area for filtration. So as we can see between the three, John Deere definitely has the most surface area for filtration on their cartridge style filter. Now, the next thing that we look at would be the pleating system. That's going to be the pleats, the actual physical pleats here on the filter. Things we're gonna be looking for is how straight those pleats are, how equidistant they are, how much space is between them, whether we have pleats that are sticking together and just overall construction. So as you can see, as we go from the John Deere here to the Wix, not too bad there pretty straight. The pleats seem just a little larger, um, so not as equidistant. They may be a little closer together here. And as we make our way around to this side, we can see that where we have a big gap there on one side. And then here, as we go to the Baldwin, we can see that we have a lot of unevenness here. We can see that there's a lot of pleating that's closer together. That's gonna make it harder for oil to flow and also cut down on that surface area for filtration. Now, on the interior side of things, most filters, of course, are gonna come with a center tube. But as you notice here on the John Deere, there is no center tube within that filter. You can actually see the pleats on the inside. And the reason for this is that with this drop-in filter for that is designed for John Deere machines, the housing that this filter is going to go into actually has that center tube already built in. So that's one thing that will not come in the construction of this filter. Now, our other two here, our Wix and our Baldwin, are both going to have a center tube in them. As you can see here on the Baldwin, we have the more standard metal center tube. And then here on the Wix, we're going to have a plastic center tube with the holes on the inside. Now, these will still work in those applications if you choose to use them, but just know that with the design, the way John Deere's engines were manufactured to handle these filters, that tube was not needed as it is built into that housing. Now, one last thing also to keep in mind, going back here to the Baldwin. 
as we do have this much larger center cap or this this top cap and the reason for that is is that the Baldwin for whatever application this filter was designed they needed a filter relief valve or an oil relief valve built into the filter now the thing about the problem with this on a John Deere engine would be that on the John Deere engine the oil relief valve is built into the housing so knowing the pressures at which this valve is going to give versus the pressures at which the valve is going to give on the John Deere engine this one here on the filter is going to give before the one would on the engine so you're going to have that dirty oil going back into your engine rather than hitting the bypass valve as it should so just keep that in mind whenever we're looking into these can these cartridge style oil filters next let's talk just a little bit here about the John Deere hydraulic filter now in hydraulic systems we know that we are handling very very high pressures in older machines or looking anywhere up to 2500 psi and in newer machines all the way up to 5000 psi so the construction of these filters has to be superior to be able to carry those loads to be able to handle that pressure that that oil is going to be sent in so we have a very very solid outside canister here and we're also going to have a very very heavy duty nut plate here on the bottom and also superior construction on the inside of this filter so if we look here at the inside some of the things that we would point out is the pleating system as we can see very straight very equidistant within that pleating system we're actually going to have this metal mesh system here that's going to help to add to the strength of that pleating system to be able to reinforce it and keep it held in place we're also going to have these wax beads all along the filter here that's going to help to keep those pleats in place whenever those high pressure fluids are coming through this filter and then we also have a heavy duty metal center tube here that's also going to be constructed to handle those high pressures now taking a closer look here at our bottom nut plate we are going to have that very heavy duty metal housing here for the nut plate and we're also going to have these large openings to allow that oil to be able to move freely and smoothly through this filter so just keep that in mind whenever we're looking at different options on hydraulic filters how they're constructed means a lot to the filtration of your hydraulic fluid, which is very important on your machines. So I hope this video was helpful for you to understand a little bit more about the John Deere filters. And if it was, we just ask that you'd hit that like button and give us a subscribe as that helps us out as well. Also guys, if you are in need of any of these filters or any other John Deere parts, make sure to check us out at 247parts.com. We'll leave that link in the description below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.